my mentor was walking with one of his students one day and he asked him, who do you say that I am? And his student says, well, some people think you're this and some people think you're that. Some people think you're a mighty guru. Some people think that uh, you're just an, a normal man. Some people think that you are God. <clears throat> and he said, but who do you say that I am? And his disciple said, I say that you are the Christ, son of the living God. You know, this idea of who we are runs deep all the way down to the very core of our being and our belief structures about ourself. In order to believe anything about someone else, we must first believe something about ourselves. In other words, the lens through which that I see you is also the lens through which I see myself. The core beliefs I have about myself are the lens that I'm able to view the world through. So if you go up, grow up within a fundamentally sound, doctrinally sound Christian home, then you grow up with this lens that I am good when I ascribe to these principles, when I observe these laws, when I do these things, I am good. And if not, I'm bad. And so we view, if you grew up in this home, you would view people that, let's say, practice homosexuality as, or that are attracted to the same sex. We would view them as bad. Like, this is bad. It's fundamentally wrong. God looks down on it. <clears throat> and yet we must understand that the only reason why we're able to look at somebody that's attracted to the same sex and think that they are bad would be first because we think that we are good because we're not practicing that or because we're not attracted to the same sex. In other words, what we believe about ourself directly, if we ascribe something to ourselves and we call that good, then we directly assume that anybody that is also doing that is also good and anybody that's not doing that is bad. And we have these principles in place, the deep-rooted belief structures and I'm here to let you know today that those deep-rooted belief foundational elements of our being are not your friend. These things are not your friend. They're actually what is causing you the greatest amount of pain. Because it's these identity, this ego, that is what this believed self, that is where all your attachments lie. And attachments are the root cause of all misery. And this is the reason why my mentor said, you must lose your life if you want to find it. You must let go of this egoic existence, the story you've believed about yourself, all the beliefs you've had about yourself, all the way down to the very core belief of I am this body and I am this mind. And that I am this body and mind lie far beyond the belief I am Christian, I am Muslim, I am Jew. And when we let go of all the beliefs, even all the way down to this very core belief that I am this body and mind, then and only then do we really find the joy of living, the joy of life, a life free from misery, a life free from emotional ups and downs, a life worth really living. This 
isn't a life that I have now, it is that I have become life. It is no longer I am trying to love, but it is that I am love. It is no longer I want to be led by the spirit, but I am spirit leading the body. I am no longer a dual being trying to awaken to a singular world, but I am a singular being living and playing in a beautiful dual world. One plus one always equals one. And so just consider for yourself right now. What am I believing about myself? What do I genuinely think about myself? Most people are completely oblivious even to what they think of themselves. Completely oblivious at the filter they see life through. I've talked to Christians daily because obviously I live in a very Christian part of the world here in Virginia. And uh, they uh, <clears throat> have such strong core beliefs in Christianity, not even in Jesus, not in, but in Christianity and in the book that upholds Christianity, they think is the Bible. And their specific teachings or beliefs about that Bible. And there's nothing wrong with any of these things. I'm just pointing out to you that most of them are um, completely unaware that they are viewing life through that lens. The lens of Christian, whatever um, kind of Christian they are. They are seeing life through that lens. But they're unaware of it. To them, everything should be, everything, they, they're trying to get everyone else to see through this lens. Because this is really the only lens. This is really the only way to live. And it's such a shallow life to live with such in, in, indoctrinated concepts, such uh, dogma. It's such a shallow existence you miss out on such beauty. That's like an oak tree. These, all these oak trees behind me, it'd be like an oak tree wanting to say, every tree should be an oak tree. And why I love oak trees, understand that if every tree was an oak tree, the world would not be nearly as beautiful. <laughs>